What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another edition of Coding with Robbie. My name's Robbie and in this video we're going to be covering Shopify theme development. So Shopify is an e-commerce platform. It's similar to WooCommerce or BigCommerce and it is hands down the best e-commerce platform to develop for. So it's super easy to get started with and in this video we're going to cover it from front to back. So by the end you should be able to code any theme you want. So uh, yeah, make sure to like and subscribe and let's get right into it. Let's go! Alright, so there's a bunch of setup we gotta do before we can start developing our theme. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is download a Shopify theme kit. This is a command line tool. It basically watches your files and syncs them with Shopify whenever there's a change. So come to shopify.dev and just go to theme kit getting started. And they got instructions for each platform, so follow the one that uh, suits you. And then you'll also want to sign up for the Shopify Partner Program. This is free and it just allows you to create free development stores. So go to shopify.com partners, join now, confirm your email and everything. And uh, once you confirm it, you'll get to a dashboard that looks like this. We can create a free Shopify store. So come here and create a store. And then uh, once you have that store, I found this repo that has some sample product CSV. So I'll link it in the description, but come here and download apparel.csv and then go into your store. Um, I got mine right here. You're going to go to products, uh, import, and then just use that apparel file. Hit upload and continue. Import products. And this is going to import a bunch of sample products. And then uh, what else do you got to do? Once you have this store, you'll have to install this app called ThemeKit Access. And this just lets you generate an API key for ThemeKit. So install this app and then you get to a page uh, like this. Let me get to it. And you're going to want to come here and you're going to create a password. It's going to email you the password and uh, you'll get it like this. So save the API key they send you. And then, um, yeah, our product should be imported now. So let's check on that. Where am I at? Uh, right here, let's go to products. So now we have a bunch of products to work with. So one last thing we're gonna do is go to collections and you'll have this homepage collection by default. Let's go in it and just add some additional products. So I'll just check some of those products we imported. So there we go. And then the last um, thing you'll wanna do is just download a liquid extension for VS Code. So if you search for liquid, there's a bunch of different ones. There's an official Shopify one. The one I like best is this one right here, but feel free to try whichever ones you want, but I'm using this one. All right, so now that we got all the tools installed, we can start creating our theme. So I'm gonna open up my terminal and I'm just gonna CD to the desktop. Now I'm gonna create a folder for my theme. I'll just call it theme. I'm gonna CD into that uh, theme folder. And now a theme is made up of seven folders. So I'm gonna make some subfolders in that directory. I'm gonna make assets. I'm gonna make templates, I'm gonna make snippets, uh, sections, locales, I think that's how you say it, um, config, and then layout. So make all those directories, and then I'm gonna uh, open it up in VS Code. So here we go, I'm in that folder, I got my seven uh, folders right here. And now for a valid Shopify theme, we just need one file, and it's layout slash theme.liquid. And then in here, we just have to have two uh, special tags. So let's just go HTML. Um, and we need a head and a body. And the two special tags are content for header and content for layout. So this content for header um, tag, this is just used for Shopify to inject scripts and uh, it's a place where plugins can add scripts and they basically just add stuff to your theme via this tag. And then content for layout is where all the template data will be plugged in. So that looks good, save that, and then go to the folder on your desktop and we're gonna create a zip. So I'll go send to compressed zip. And then we're gonna go to our Shopify store, go to themes. And uh, let's upload that theme. So I'll go upload zip file. I will drag it in. And it's gonna upload it. There we go. I'm gonna publish this theme. 
And now we got to connect it to theme kit. So to do that, we'll go back to our terminal and we're still inside our theme folder. I'm going to go theme configure and then we have to give it a store name. So mine is coding with Robbie.myshopify.com. We have to give it a theme ID, so dash T, and my theme ID I can get from here. I'll go to edit code, and it's right here in the URL. So just copy the number, and I'll paste it in. And then last up, we have to go dash P and give it our API key that we got from the theme kit access uh, app. So copy that and paste it in, and then hit enter. And then this is going to generate a configuration file. So if we go back to our theme, we now have this config.yaml file. And this is just for theme kit to know where to upload the changes and which theme and how to access it and everything. So now that we have that, we can run theme watch from our folder and it's going to yell at us. It's going to say, Hey, you can't make changes to a live theme, add this flag to do it. So let's add the flag. So theme watch dash dash allow dash live. And now ThemeKit is watching our folder for changes and it's going to sync it with Shopify whenever there's a change. So let's uh, create our index template. So we'll go in templates and we'll create index.liquid. And then in here, let's just do h1 coding with Robbie slash h1. Save it. Let's check uh, ThemeKit and say, hey, we found a change. Let's upload that to Shopify. And now if we go back to Shopify and we reload our theme, we can see our index template is now there with the code we added. And if we go to our store, we get coding with Robbie. So we're all set up with theme kit. And now we're going to go over the directory structure. So if we go back to VS code, we have these seven folders. So assets is just for images and CSS files and JavaScript files, stuff like that. Config is for global theme settings. So if you go back to your theme in uh, Shopify, we have this uh, customize button and any settings we put in that config folder in a special file called a uh, setting schema.json. They're going to show up in the theme settings right here. Um, what else do we got? We got layout, which is just like kind of the bones of the HTML pages. So you can have alternates, but the default one is theme.liquid and that's required. Locales is for translations. So say our, Theme's going to have some language like add to cart. We could put in translations for different languages. And when the store is on a different language, it'll automatically translate that. Um, we got sections. This was the newest um, type that was introduced. These are basically partials that have settings. And when you create a section, you'll be able to uh, add sections to your pages. But we don't have that set up yet. Um, we got snippets, which was before sections came out. This is just partials and you can't have settings on a snippet and they can't be added via the uh, theme customize page. And then we got templates, which are basically just the pages and we got some special templates for each uh, page type. So let's just create them all right now. There's, and we're going to do this the old school way. So first we're going to do it with liquid files and then at the end we'll do JSON files where you can use sections and everything. But yeah, the special uh, files are there's a 404.liquid, there's a product.liquid, there is a collection.liquid, we got um, article and blog, so article.liquid, we got blog.liquid, and then we got cart.liquid. We got, let's see, we got index already. There's list collections.liquid. And then we got page.liquid. Password.liquid. Um, Search.liquid. And then the last one is gift card.liquid. And there is some customer pages templates, but we're going to go over that another time. So this is all the pages that make up a Shopify store. And then you can have alternates for each one of these. So say, um, you know, say I have a collection page and then I wanted a special collection page that's different than this one. I could create that by going collection 
dot, say, and you can name it whatever you want. So I can go alternate dot liquid. And now I have two different collection templates, but we'll do more with that later. But yeah, we got all our uh, templates created and uh, next we'll start setting up our index template a little better. All right, so before we go any further, I wanted to go over this assets folder right here. So this is used to host images, fonts, style sheets, uh, JavaScript, really anything. And to use it, you just put your assets in there. So let's put this puppy image. And uh, yeah, then we can access it in any of our liquid templates. So I can go uh, puppy.jpg, and then I have to say that's an asset URL. And that should grab us the URL for that asset. So let's check it out. And we get it right here, and you can see it's hosted on their CDN and everything. And yeah, we can turn that into an image tag. Just like this. And that should work. Let's try it out. And we get the puppy image. And then, yeah, there's a couple special file types you can put in here. So we can do style.css.liquid. And we can do scripts.js.liquid. And these are just uh, style sheets and JavaScripts where you can uh, use liquid inside them. So let's try the style one. We'll go body. And let's just go background image is a URL. And let's use that asset we uploaded. So I'll do quotes in here and I'll just go puppy.jpg and it's an asset URL. Save that and then let's link it up. So let's go to theme.liquid. We'll go up to our head and we'll go. So the compiled file is gonna turn into style.css. So let's go style.css and it's an asset URL. And then there's a special uh, filter we can add to turn it into a link tag. So we can just go style sheet tag. And let's see if that works. So we'll go back here and I'll refresh. And now I get it as the background. So that's working. And then let's try out the JavaScript one. So let's just go alert and let's alert puppy.jpg asset URL. And then let's link it up in theme. So I'm gonna copy this one right here and I'll put it down here at the end of uh, body. And it's gonna be style.js. And then there's one called script tag also. So that should work, let's see if it did. And it's not working, so I did something wrong. So I put the wrong file name, it's scripts.js. So my bad, let's try that again. Come on. And there we go, we get it. So just looking at the page from top to bottom, the first thing we probably want to do is create our header section. So we're going to do sections later. For now, we're going to create a snippet, which is basically just a partial. We'll call it header.liquid. And then in here, let's do a header tag. And in there, let's do an H1. And we'll put coding with Robbie again. And uh, yeah, now we want to render this partial on all our pages. So let's go to our layout um, file and right above content for layout, we're going to render that partial. And to do that, you just go render and then you put the name of your partial. So ours is header. So save that and let's go back and we should have two of these now. So I refresh and I get two. So let's go back to our index template and um, let's delete this hard coded one right here. And now uh, one thing to note is we can get data from Shopify. So we don't have to hard code our name here. If you go to uh, the documentation, you'll find this objects page. And here's all the different stuff we can access in our templates. And different stuff is available uh, on different pages. So for instance, if we went to cart, well, cart is available everywhere. But say we go to, uh, let's see, something that's not global. Say I went to gift card, it's only available in giftcard.liquid. And um, yeah, so you can look through this, but in our case, we probably want to get the shop name from our store. So there is a shop object right here and we have access to all these properties. So we want shop.name. So let's go back into our uh, template and instead of hard coding it, let's put shop.name just like that. Let's go back and see if it still works and we still get our store name. So now that's connected to settings 
uh, store details and you go to edit and there'll be a field for it. So that's cool. So next up, we probably wanna show our navigation. And we didn't go over this yet, but if you go to your Shopify store, we have our navigation menus right here. So they start you out with a couple, you get a footer menu and a main menu. Both are required. So if we click into main menu, we got three links and the handle is main menu. So we can get this data from uh, Shopify. So we look in objects again, and this is called a link list. So let's find link lists, and it's right here. And they give us a couple examples of how to render our uh, links. So let's copy this, and we'll go back to our header partial, and I'll just do a UL, and then I'll paste in that snippet. So it's a for loop, and for each link within linklist.mainmenu.links, we're rendering the title, and it's gonna be a link. So let's check that out. Um, did I save it? No, I didn't, so I'll save, and then refresh, and it'll take a second to sync. There we go, we're getting uh, three anchor tags with links that are in our navigation menu, so let's just uh, wrap those in an li. I'll just fix the formatting real quick. There we go. And that's pretty good. We got our navigation menu and I'm not gonna do any CSS in this video because it's just about uh, the Shopify stuff. So next up, we wanna start building out our page a little bit more. So maybe on our home page, we wanna display that home page collection that we have right here. So let's go back to our index template and we'll start doing that. So we'll go to index and uh, yeah, let's display that collection. So if we go back to objects, um, let's see what we got. So let's check out collections. So we can loop over all the collections on our store or we can access a specific collection. So let's do this one. Let's copy the snippet and we'll paste it in. And then it looks like this is looping over each product within the sale po uh, potions <laughs> uh, collection, which we don't have. So let's check out our collection. If we go to collections homepage, our handle for this one is front page, so let's do that. We'll go back here. I'm gonna type front page. And then, uh, yeah, let's render the title up here. So I'll just do an H2 tag. And let's uh, go collections, front page. And then let's see what properties we have available to us. So if we go to uh, the collection object, um, where does it show it? So collection, and then we have all these properties. So we can get the handle of the collection, we can get you know the image, the ID, and let's see, we want the title, so let's go dot title. And then below that is where we're looping through all the products. So let's make a div in here. And then let's display the product title. So we have access to product within that loop. So let's go to product. And it's right down here. And we have all these properties available to us. So let's, uh, let's do an h3 tag. We'll go product.title. And then below that, let's display the price. So it's product.price. And then below that, or actually above, let's display the image. So it's IMG SRC, and we'll go product dot, and let's see what we can access. So if we go back here, we got all this stuff, and what we want is probably featured image. So let's use that, dot featured image. And let's check out what we got. So we go back to our page, and we're looping through the home page collection, and it gets us the title and the price, which is in cents, so we have to format that better. And then our images aren't working good. So if we check that out, it looks like the URL is messed up. So we can apply um, filters to different liquid stuff. So if we just uh, look up Shopify liquid filters, there's a bunch of stuff you can do to liquid tags. So for instance, if we wanted to make it uppercase, we could add this part right here. If we want to remove something, we can do that. And there's just a bunch of different stuff you can do, so you'll have to look through it. But what we want is um, 
media filters. Let me go back up, jump to media filters. And for an image, we have to add, um, for the, we have to add image tag to it. So let's copy this part. And um, I'm just gonna add it after this dot featured image. Save that and that should fix our image. So if we go back, there we go. And what's cool is you can add like properties to this. So if they showed an example of adding a width. So let's try that. Say I go width 400, it should resize our image for us, which is nice. And it does, so that's cool. And then for this um, price right here, there's also money filters. So let's look up money filters. And then to format it, we can just add this bar money uh, to our tag. So let's put that right there. Check that out. We'll go back here. And now it's formatted better. So now let's link these products to their um, respective product page. So let's see, what can I do? I'm gonna put an anchor in here. I'll go href equals, leave it empty for now. I'm gonna wrap everything. And then we just gotta put the product URL in here. And all it is is product.url. And then let's go back here and I refresh. And now they're all linked up. And if I go to one of them, I just get an empty page. So now we're on the product template. So if I go right here, I can just go product template to make sure it's working. And it is. All right, so now we're on the product page. And if we go back to this liquid uh, objects page, let me go back to it right here. And if we look for product, so we automatically have the product object available to us on the product page. So that means I can just use the tags here. So I could go product.title and then maybe I want the product price. And then let's display the uh, description. So it's product.description. And I just kind of memorized all the properties, but if you're unsure what's available, you can always just come back here and it's all listed out for you. So let's go product.description. And then, yeah, we're gonna want a product form with a uh, add to cart button. So to do that, we can go form. And there's some special forms. So the one we want is product. And then we have to give it our product. So we can go product is product. And then we have to go end form. And then in here, we have to have a field for the product variant ID. So we can go, usually it's a select tag. So let's do select. And the name is gonna be ID. And then in here, we have to loop through all the um, product.variants. So we got the four and then end four. And just create an option for each variant that's in our product. So we didn't talk about variants yet, so I'll just go back real quick. If we go here, all these products just are single variant, but you can add multiple uh, versions of your product. So say you wanted to add like different colors or different sizes, you could go in options and say I could add like a size and go small, medium, large. But for now, we just have one uh, variant, so we'll leave that for now. But yeah, for each one, we want to go option um, value is equal to variant dot ID, and then uh, inside here we'll show variant dot title. So let's see what that did. I'll go back. And uh, we got all this, but I don't have my form. So what's going on there? So I probably made a mistake with the form so we can go back to git bash and it says, hey, syntax error on line uh, nine. For loop valid syntax. So let's see what's wrong. So for, and I gotta go for variant in product variants. So let's see if that fixed it. It looks like it updated and there's no more error. So let's go back, I'll refresh. And it says, hey, the product form must be given a product. So I did that wrong. So maybe I just go like that. So let's save that, go back and refresh and it fixes it. So here we have our um, variant 
select and we just have one variant and the default variant name is default title but we see our select here and it's getting the value of uh, the variant ID so that's cool and then we need an add the cart button so let's go inside the form we'll just go button type is submit and uh, let's go add to cart Save that, go back to our product template, I'll refresh and I'll hit add to cart. And now I'm on the cart page, so I think it added it to cart, but we haven't dealt with our cart page yet. But we can actually check the API. If we go to cart.js, I can see that that item's now in my cart. So now we'll start styling up this cart page. So let's go back to VS Code and uh, go to our cart template. And I'll just go h1 cart. And then let's go to the Shopify objects page and uh, see what we got on cart. So let's find cart on here. So we got cart and it's available globally and we have all these properties. So we can get the item count, we can get an array of all the items, we can get the total subtotal price, we can get the cart note, all that. So uh, let's just loop through our items. So let's go back here and I'll go for item in cart dot, I think it's line items. Nope, it's just cart dot items. And then uh, for each one of those, let's do a div. And let's check what uh, an item is. So we'll go back here. I'll go to items and it returns an array of line items. So if we go to line item, we get all these properties. So let's, uh, let's see, let's go and do an image of the product we added. So I'll go item.image. And remember, we have to do that image uh, URL filter. And I'll add a width, I'll just do 200. And then what else do we want? Let's do the title of the product. So I'll go h2 and just go item.title. And then we probably want the price, so let's go item.price. And then we have to add that money filter like we did in the previous file. And let's see what that's getting us. So we'll go back here and I'll uh, go right here and I'll refresh. And I can see I'm getting that product. So we have to add a checkout button. And to do that, we have to wrap a uh, everything in a form. So let's just go to the top and I'll go form and this one's called cart and form. And then I'm guessing I'm going to have to pass it the cart, but let's see what happens. I'll save that. I'll refresh and yeah, cart must be given the cart. So let's go back and give it cart. So I'll go comma cart, save that refresh and see what happens. So there we go, and now we can add our add to cart button. So button type submit, and then we have to add a special property. We have to go name is equal to checkout. And then let's just go uh, checkout. Let's try that, we go back, and I'll refresh and I hit checkout, and it should take me to a checkout page. So the checkout page is a little slow, but here we go. We got the product and we're ready to check out. So let's go back and let's add some more stuff. So we probably want to add the cart total. So let's do that at the bottom. So maybe uh, let's just put a divider here. Maybe we got total is cart.total and that's going to be money. Whoops. So cart.total doesn't exist. Let's see what we got. We'll go back to cart and we got cart.total price. So let's change that. I'll go back and refresh. There we go. So now we probably want a way to update the cart count or remove items from cart. All right, so let's start adding that behavior. So let's go back to VS Code 
And uh, the remove button is easy. We can just do a, an A tag. And let's put remove in there. And if we check out the liquid object and we go back to line item, there should be some way to remove it. Let's, let's look for remove. URL to remove. So let's put that in here. So item.url to remove. And then updating the old fashioned way is a little weird. For each one we have an input. Name is equal to updates array. And then we have to have value and we'll set it to item.quantity. So we'll have an input where people can change the quantity. And then you have to have an uh, update button down here. So it's another submit button, but this one has name update. So uh, let's change this button to say update and we'll give it a try. Let's go back to our page. And um, right here, I'll refresh. So let's change it to 10 and I'll hit update. And now I have 10 in cart and the total changed. And let's try a remove button. I hit remove and now it's equal to zero. So one other thing we could do is we could wrap this in an if statement. We can go, hey, if cart.empty, let's show a special message for that. Otherwise, let's render all our items and update and everything. So and if, let me indent all this stuff. And then if the cart's empty, let's just put a message, hey, your cart is empty. Save that. We go back and I refresh and it didn't work. So let's see what I did wrong. I'll go back to the cart object. And is there an empty? There is. So let's see if cart.empty show this, otherwise show that. Why didn't that work? Oh, maybe you need the question mark. So let's add a question mark. Save it, I'll go back, refresh, and now I get my empty message. And let's go back home, let's add another product. I'll add that, I get it, let's add a second product. So I'll go back again, let's add this one right here. Oh, and this one has multiple options, so we can see that variant selector we did. So let's add large, add it, and I get that. And let's make this five and this 10. All right, so we have a small bug. We added five of these to cart, but we're just showing the individual price right here. So we probably want to show the total times the quantity. So if we go back to objects, let's check out the line item object again. And we got different stuff, but the one I think we want is final line price. So let's try that. We'll go back here and I'll do final line price. I'll save that and um, I'll refresh. And there we go, now we're getting the combined price, which is a little better, and it syncs up with the total. And our remove button works, so everything's good. Next up, let's take a look at, um, we'll just do basic pages next. All right, so on the page, we should have access to the page object. So we're gonna go back here and check out page, and we see it's accessible, and we have uh, access to these properties right here. So let's go in VS Code, we'll open the page template. I'm just gonna go H1, and I'll do page title. And then I'll do a div and I'll show page.content. Let's save that and uh, see what we get. We'll go back here. I will refresh. I get the title right here. I don't see any content. So let's go inside Shopify. We'll go to pages. And the only one they start you out with is this contact page. If I go in here and I add some content, we should see it appear on our page. So I'll refresh and I get it. And then let's create one more page. So let's just say we had a terms of service page. I could create it right here. I can save it and then uh, let's add it to our navigation. So I'll go to navigation, main menu, and let's add an item and I'll just go terms and it'll link to the terms of service page. So I'll add that, hit save. Go back and now I got it on my menu and I click it and it takes me to the terms of service page. So um, usually you'll want a special page template for contact. So we're gonna do that now. 
So let's go back here and let's create a new one. We'll call it page.contact.liquid. And then let's just copy in the stuff from the basic page. And then we're gonna add a contact form down here. But first, let's go back to Shopify. We'll go to pages. And if I go to terms of service, I can see it's using the default page. And then if I go to contact, um, it's using the contact template. So you can easily select which template you wanna use for each page here. So let's leave it on contact. And let's go back here and let's add a contact form. So I found this in the documentation and they give an example of how to do a contact form. So let's just copy all of this and I'll put it right down here. And uh, let's see, let's see what the required inputs are. So you just have to have an email and a body for it to be a valid form. So let's delete all the extra stuff. So I don't really care about first name or last name or phone. We need email and we need message, so let's leave those two. So let's see. So to create a, a field, you just do an input, and for the name, you have to do contact, brackets, and then put whatever you wanna name it in there. So let's just add a test one. Let's just create a field called test, and I will call it type text, and I'll be test. And then you don't need these IDs, they just put them in, but that's completely optional. So let's just delete all those, just to show that we don't need it. Hit save and let's check out our page. So now we got our contact form down here, let's try it out. Um, hey. And we hit, what does it say? I don't like that it says create, but I'm gonna hit it. And that should have sent it. So this should go to the store email address. So let me see if I got it. And I get, hey, new cu customer message. And I click it. And it shows the email field. We get that test field and body. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's see what we can do next. Let's just knock out some of these easy ones. So we got 404 right here. This is when you go to a 404 page. So let's just put 404. Uh, page not found, I can't type, just like that. And then now if we go to a page that doesn't exist, so, so just go to slash all that, I get that 404 page. So that's cool. Um, we got blog and article. So Shopify has a built-in blogging thing that's not very good, but let's try it out. We'll go to blog posts and then let's create a blog post. We'll call it uh, my first article. Put some content in there. I'll make it visible. Um, we can add an excerpt. And let's uh, save that. And then where do you create a blog? Okay, so we have a news blog right now. And if we want to create a new one, we could go here. Let's just call it testing. Save that. So now this article belongs to the testing blog. So let's check out blog on here. I'll go to blog and it's available on the blog and article templates. And what do we get here? We get articles, which is an array of articles, article count, ID, handles, blah, blah, blah. So let's go in our blog template and let's go H1 and we'll go blog.title. And then let's loop through our blog articles. So it's for article in blog.articles. And then for each article, let's render a div and see what we have available in articles. So I'll go back here. So let's see, I did blog.title and blog.articles, which gets an article for each one. And we have all this stuff, so let's go do an anchor tag and we'll link it to article.url and then in there let's show the article title so let's go h2 article.title and then let's show the author so I'll go article.author I spell that wrong? I don't know how to spell. And then uh, 
let's show the excerpt. So article dot excerpt. And then I don't know, you can probably do HTML in there. So let's put it in a div in case there's multiple uh, tags. Just like that, let's see if this works. I'll go back. And I don't even know what the URL for blogs is. So let's see. Let's just view this article. And then let's go back to blog slash testing. And we get it right here. Here's the blog title and it's looping through the articles. We just have one. We get the title, the title, the um, author and then the excerpt right here. So I click in and now we're on the um, article page. So uh, yeah, let's check out the article page. It's kind of weird that it's showing the content already. So I'm just gonna put article page and see if it changes. Cause I don't get why it's showing this. So I refresh and it's working. So maybe they start you out with some invisible default page. But yeah, let's go article title. And then maybe we want the date, so we could go article dot, let's see how to get the date, it was published. Um, yeah, article published at. Go back here, I get that, I get the date it's published at, but it's formatted weird, so let's look up how to format that. So it says use the date filter, let's check that out. So that's cool, we can put in the format we want just like that, so let's copy this. I'm gonna add it right here, save it, go back, and I'm gonna close this tab, go back and refresh, and that's a little nicer. And then we want the article content, so let's go divs, article.content. Okay, so now let's enable uh, comments on our article blog template right here. So I'm gonna go back to blog posts. I'm gonna go to manage blogs and we have our test blog right here. I'm gonna click into it. And right here you can enable comments. So I'm just gonna allow them and have them automatically publish. I'll hit save. Let's go back to our template right here. And uh, let's go back to VS Code and we'll go if uh, article.comments enabled. And if, and let's just see if that works. I'll put some random text right there, go back and refresh. And I don't get it, so I did something wrong. Let's go back to liquid objects. We go to uh, article. Let's see, article.comments enabled. Article, oh, I forgot the if. There we go. Go back and see if that worked. And I get it right here. So inside there, let's put an H2 tag. I'll go leave a comment. And then there's another special form we can use and it's form, it's called new underscore comment. And we have to pass this to article. And then let's put a submit button. So the button, it's gotta be lowercase, button type submit. Add comment. And then I had to dig around a little bit, but I found an example of uh, the new comment form. And here's all the different forms you can do with that form tag. And then they have an example right here. So the comment form, and uh, it looks like you need a name, an email, and a comment. So I'm just gonna copy it from here. I need this form errors tag at the top. So let's go back here. I'll paste that all in right inside the form. Let me fix the indentation. Now let's see if that works and go back. I gotta leave a comment and say I don't fill it out. Oh, I get this um, robot thing. So let me just say I'm not a robot. I think I got them all. And then I get those errors. So it populates that form errors tag with the errors. So let's go to Robbie. Uh, hello at RobbieK.com. Let's just put a comment. Hey, this article was awesome. Hit add comment. And it added the comment, but we're not rendering them yet. So above the form, let's go 
for comment in article.comments and four and I put form instead of four so fix that and then let's do a div for each one and we'll show an h3 let's see we got comment dot name and then say we want to show their email we could go which you probably would never want to do but comment dot email and then the content is uh, comment dot what is it let's see we'll go back to objects we'll go to comment dot content let's see if that worked all right so i think that's pretty good for the article template let's see what else we can do so let's check out vs code we did the 404 we did article we did blog we did cart let's do the collection page now so on the collection page we should have access to the collection object and we can access all this stuff so let's just do an h1 with uh, the collection title and then uh, let's see we're gonna loop through all the products in that collection so let's go for product in collection dot products And then for each one, we want to render the product, which we did in the index template. So let's take a look here and let's turn this into a snippet. So I'm going to copy this and I'll go in snippets and let's just create product item dot liquid. Paste that in. And now instead of uh, rendering the HTML, I'm going to render that partial. So I'll go render um, product item. On the home page, let's see if that still works. I'll go back here, I'll go home. And I broke something, so it doesn't have access to the product within this partial, so we have to pass it. So for that, you just go comma product. I think you do it like that. No, you probably just do it the same way as you do on form. Let's try this. So go back, and it's still not working. Let me try again. Let's try product, product. Refresh. Still broken. Oh, there it goes. So that's good. So now we can do the same thing within our uh, product item. Uh, no, sorry, in our collection template. So for each product, we want to render that partial. So let's go back to our collection. We'll go to catalog, which is the all collection. And there we go. We're getting our products, but we have a lot of them. So you can actually paginate these. So let's go back here and uh, we can just wrap it, the whole page in. I gotta look it up. So if you go to uh, this page right here, shopify.dev slash theme slash architecture, they have some examples for all the different templates. So we're on, uh, what are we doing? We're doing the collection page. And uh, let's see, they give an example right here. So let's copy this. And let's copy this down here. Whoops. So that should paginate it by 20. So I think we only have 20 products. So let's just do it by four to test it. I'll hit save and I'll go back. And now I'm on here. And uh, we only get four products and we get this pagination thing at the bottom. So that's cool. We got pages now and you can also do ordering. So if we go back to here, they give an example of that. So let's just copy this and see what it renders. So I'll put it right here. So it's just a select and it's looping through uh, collection.sort options. So let's see what that gets us. We'll go back, we get a select and here's all the ordering options. So uh, it's not gonna do anything now. So they give us some JavaScript that uh, makes it work. So let's check that out. I'm just going to copy it in for now and see what it does. I'll put it at the bottom, go back. And all this does is when someone changes it, it adds this parameter to the URL and then it uh, loads the page. So now we can sort by different uh, sort options. And that's pretty much the collection page. So there's more properties you can access like collections can have an image. 
Um, there's a bunch of stuff you can look through, but that's a good basic collection page. All right, so next up we got the gift card page. So I actually spelled this wrong earlier. It's gonna be gift underscore card. And then let's check out what the gift card page is. We'll go back here and I'll go to the gift card template right here. And it's just a basic page when someone buys a gift card, they can see this page with the QR code and the code to use it and everything. So let's look up how the template looks and it looks like we need to add a script tag and we gotta add uh, this code right here. So let's just copy everything. And um, go back, we need the special script on this page, so I'll put it above. And then let's see what else. I guess we need this Apple wallet code. I'll paste it down there. And uh, yeah, this is an interesting tag right here. This is the layout tag. So by default, every page is gonna use our um, theme.liquid layout. But if we put this up here, it's gonna say, hey, don't use any layout at all. So it'd be like a blank page. And then you could also define, say I want to use a different one besides um, theme.liquid. Maybe I have you know theme.alternate.liquid. And in here I could go layout, theme.alternate. And it will use that alternate layout. But Let's go theme none, like that. And uh, let's test out this page. So we gotta go back to our store and you go to products, um, gift cards, and I already created one, but you'll see a page where you can add a gift card product or you could um, issue a gift card. So let's just issue a gift card. And here it is, and we gotta add a customer. So create new customer, I'll go Robbie Klein. Coding with Robbie at gmail.com. Save. Uh, I already created that customer, so I'm just gonna find the customer right here. Hit activate and send. Let's see, it says it emailed it to me, so I'll go to my email. Here it is right here. View gift card. And we're on that special page with just the uh, QR code, so let's see what else we can do on there. Let's go to objects and let's check out gift card. Right here. And we have all this stuff we can display. So say we wanted to show the balance, we could go, um, let's do it below the QR code. We'll go gift card dot balance. Let's throw that in an H2. See if that works. Uh, where are we at? Over here. There we go. We can see the balance. We got to add the money filter though. And what else? We probably want to show the code to use it. So let's see what that is. It's just dot code. So let's show the code. So gift card dot code. There we go, did I not add the money filter? <laughs> I typed money filter instead of just money. So let's go back, refresh, come on. There we go, so I think that's good enough. You can explore the other properties, but that's the gift card page. All right, so next up we got the uh, list collections page, and this is just a uh, index page for all the collections. So if we go to objects, we can check out collections, and we have access to this on that page. So let's go to the page, we'll just go H1 collections, and then we're gonna loop through all our collections and go for collection in collections. And for, and then for each collection, let's just render an anchor tag that goes to collection.url. And then inside there, let's just put, uh, H2 tag, we'll go collection.title. And then maybe we wanna show how many products are in that collection. Let's see how we could do that. So we'll go back here and uh, let's check out collection. And where are the properties? This is the wrong, okay, here it is. Collection.allproductscount. 
let's see, total number of products in the collection. So that looks right. So dot all products count. So collection dot all products count. And then let's go back and see what we got so far. So I'll go to my page and we can see this template at slash collections. So there we go, I get the collection name and then the product count. So maybe I want products. Now let me just put this in a div. And then we just have one collection on our store right now, but a popular store might have hundreds of collections. So we really want to pay, paginate this. So let's just copy it from, uh, where'd we do it? Our collection page. So let me copy this tag, I'll put it at the top. And this time we're paginating collections by four. And then let me get the bottom part, which is right here. So that looks good. So now if we have more than four collections, it'll add the pagination. Cool. And then um, we actually, we didn't do this, but we want to do this on our blog page also. So we could have hundreds of blog posts. So we got to paginate it. So let's paginate. Um, blog.articles by four and let's copy this bottom part and let me just make sure I didn't break anything so I'll go back to blog slash testing we're still good and um, yeah I think that's good for the list collections page all right so the last template is search.liquid and we're going to go over that now so first we have to add a search form let's do it in our header file so I'll open header I'll just put it after the navigation. I'm gonna do a form tag, and the action is gonna be slash search. And then this needs one field, so we'll do input type is equal to text. All right, so we'll do type is equal to search. And then the name is just gonna be Q for query. And then we need a submit button. So button type submit search. And that should be a valid search form right here. So let's try that out. I'll go back here and uh, let me refresh. I get that search form and uh, let's just search for blue. So I search and it's given me all these uh, products with blue in the title. So let's see what the search page has access to. So if we go to search in here, let me find it, search. So we get the default sort order, we get filters, performed, results, and results is array of uh, either article, page, or product. They're all mixed together. So let's uh, render those. So let's go to our search page. We'll just go, well, first let's check if we perform, perform the search. So let's go if search.performed else. Let's just go, if there's a search, we'll go, here's your results. And uh, if we didn't do a search, we'll just go, try searching for something. So let's see if that works. I'll go back to my page. And we actually performed a search, so we should see that first part. And we do, and say we didn't search for anything we get try searching for something. So now let's loop through the results. So we can go uh, for result in search dot results. And then there's, there's a special way to tell what kind of item it is. So let's look that up in this documentation page. And uh, let's see, how do you do it? Maybe it's in the objects page. So we have object type. So we can go, let's just render it to see what we get. So let's go result.object type. Check that out. I'll go back to my page and I'll refresh. And it says product, product, product. And say we search for terms. You know, now we're getting a page in the search, search results. So you kind of just have to do an if else statement and render each one differently. So we could go, you know, if result object type is equal to page.
else if result object type is equal to article else it would be a product so we can do it just like that and then just fill this in with what we want so i'm just going to go a href result url result title And I think all three of these should have those. So I'm just gonna do it like this. <clears throat> see if it works. So I made an error somewhere. Let's see what's going on. It says line 12, end four is not a valid delimiter for if. So it should be end if. I'll go back and refresh and come on. There we go. Now we're getting links to the results. And if we search for a page, it would show up. And if we search for an article, I forget what our article was, but it'll show up also. So yeah, you also wanna uh, paginate these. So we can just copy it from a uh, collection. We'll just go up here, copy it. And this time we're gonna paginate uh, search.results. And let's copy the bottom part, which is right here. And there we go, that's a basic search page. All right, so next up, we're gonna go over this config folder right here, and this is used for global theme settings. So we just create a file in here called settings underscore schema JSON. And then yeah, in here we define all the settings our uh, theme should have. So if you check out the docs, and you go to, get back to it, the settings page, you basically just create an object like this and you can define different settings and what type they are. And there's a bunch of different types you can use. So uh, we got some basic ones right here. You can do a checkbox number, radio range, select text, text area. And then there's some specialty ones. So if you want to do select an article or a blog or a collection, you can do that. There's colors, color background, font pickers, HTML. There's a bunch of different kinds you can play with. So let's add some to our theme. We'll go in this file and we'll just start out with an array. And then we have to define a section and a section has a name. So let's call this section colors. And then the color section will have an array of settings. Just like that. And now we can put our settings in here. So let's create one and a setting has a type. So let's do a color field. And then we need an ID, and this is how you'll access it within your theme. So let's call this one BG. And then you need a label. This is what we'll display in the Shopify backend. So let's uh, call it background color. And then optionally, you can add a uh, default value. So let's go default, and by default, we'll make it white. So there we added a color setting. We can add another one. So let's go text color. Maybe by default that's black. And then yeah, let's add one more section. So I'll just copy this. And I'll call this section, um, I'm just gonna call it settings. I can't think of anything. Let's try a different type. For this one, we'll do a checkbox. And uh, let's make this ID show underscore search. And then we'll put a label show search form. And uh, default value will go true. Now let's delete that comma right there, save that and see if we got any errors. And it looks like it worked good. Let's go back to our theme now. So go back to Chrome. I'm gonna go inside my store. And uh, I was at it before. So you go to online store themes, customize, theme settings down here, and we get those settings we added. So we got our color fields right here, and we got our uh, checkbox uh, setting right there. So let's uh, change this. Let's just make it black. Whoa. So we want the background to be black and the text color to be white. We can just go like that and hit save. And now we can... Now let's hook it up to our theme. So let's go in here. We'll go to our style.css.liquid. 
And let's go body and let's go color is now gonna be, and you just go settings dot whatever the ID is. So settings dot BG. And then let's change uh, the background color. Sorry, this should be background color. And then let's change the text color with color. So it was uh, settings dot text color. And now it should be hooked up. Let's try that out. We'll go back here and I'll refresh. And now it's uh, black and white. So let's uh, hook up that search field now. We'll go to our header and let's wrap this in an if statement. We can go if settings dot show search display that form, otherwise don't. Just like that. And let's go back to our uh, preview thing right in Shopify and I'll refresh. So it's pretty cool. You can kind of live preview what it would look like. So I can uh, change it back. And then if we uncheck this now, that search form should hide. And yeah, that's global settings. And you normally will not do it for uh, stuff like this because now we have section settings, which we'll go over later. But yeah, that's the config folder. All right, so now we're gonna cover this locales folder and this is used for translations. So if we take a look at our theme currently, it's just all hard coded in English. So we have like search right here or add to cart, stuff like that you'll probably wanna translate if they're on a different language. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. You just go in locales and then you put the language code. So our default is in English. And since it's uh, the default, we add dot default and then dot JSON. And in here, we can basically create translations. So let's create a section called general. And then general is gonna have an add the cart translation. And in English, it's just add the cart. And then uh, let's do Spanish also. So let's create another file. We'll do es for Spanish.json. Let's copy this. And uh, in Spanish, add the cart should be uh, this right here, which is probably wrong, but let's put it in. So add the cart. And now, uh, oops. Now we can use the translation in our theme. So let's go to our product form. And instead of hard coding add the cart, let's go, um, what was it? General dot add the cart. And then you have to add the T filter for translation. Now let's see if that works. So we'll go back to our theme and uh, I'm gonna refresh. And it says we don't have that translation. And that's because in here I did capital, let's go. And uh, I wonder if I can change it like this. Let's try that. I'll go back. And there we go, we get add the cart. And now what's cool about this is uh, if someone changes their store to Spanish, it's gonna show the translation. And they can also edit the translation. So if you go to uh, online store themes and we go actions, now we get edit languages. So someone could come in here and say they want to say add the bag, they could translate it right here. And it says add the bag. But say we're on a Spanish store, we could go to uh, settings, languages, and say we just changed it to Spanish instead of English. And then we go back to our store, Shopify is gonna know to use the Spanish translation. So that's pretty cool. All right, so we got through everything except for sections. So sections were introduced maybe three, four years ago. And it's basically a snippet, but with settings. And when you create a section, it's gonna show up in the customized theme editor. And users will be able to drag in the sections they want and reorder them and do a lot of customization. And uh, maybe a year or two ago, they introduced sections everywhere. So it's on the home page only at first, and now you can add them to every page. So it just really lets the user who doesn't know how to code customize their theme a lot more. All right, so there's two ways to use sections. One is to create a reusable section that the user can drag in and reorder and all that. And the second is to use it kind of like a snippet where the user can't remove it or reorder it, but it can have settings. So uh, let's cover that first. We're gonna convert this header into a section. So let's go within the sections folder. We'll create a new file called header.liquid. And then let's copy the HTML over. 
just like that. And then a section has to have a schema. So you go schema and schema. And then in here we add some JSON and a section has to have a name. So let's call our section header. And then now we can add settings here. So let's go settings. And let's move over to show search set uh, <laughs> settings. So I'm gonna go to uh, my config right here and I'm just gonna copy it from here and I'll paste it in. Uh, just like that. And then let's add a background color setting also. So let me copy this one more time. And uh, this one's gonna be type color. Um, ID BG, label background color. I'm just gonna remove default for now. And uh, yeah, now we have a section and we have some settings. So to uh, render this on the page, we can go back to our theme.liquid. Instead of using render here, we can type section instead. And now if we go to customize theme, uh, we'll see it pop up. So here's the header section and we got our one of the settings in there. Why didn't color work? Let's see. So if we go back, type color ID BG. I have this trailing comma I gotta remove. Same right here. So fix that and uh, let's refresh. And now we see the two settings right there. So now uh, there's some other stuff we can do within here. So let's just add a class to this, class header, and you can add style sheet stuff in here. So let's go style sheet and style sheet. And now uh, when Shopify loads the page, it's gonna see all the sections you're using and it's gonna grab the style sheet from each one of them and append it to the uh, content for header stuff right there. So that's cool, so the page won't be loading a bunch of extra CSS, so let's just add some padding here. And uh, yeah, they got the same for JavaScript, so I could go JavaScript and JavaScript. And let's just go uh, console.log hey from header. And then let's hook up uh, these settings. So we can go up back up here. And this is how you get the global settings for section settings. It's just section.settings. Whatever you name the ID. And then what I don't like about these things right here is you can't use your settings inside them. So you would think that you could go like this. But that won't work. So if you want to use settings, they recommend uh, using inline style like this which I'm not crazy about, but we're gonna do it. So copy that in and maybe we do the setting stuff up here and the non-setting stuff down here, just like that. And there we go, we got our whole section hooked up, so let's try it out. We'll go back here, I'm gonna refresh. And now uh, that's hooked up to the search form and we got the background color hooked up. So let's just make it a gray for now. And I'll hit save. And then let's go back to our store. I refresh, I get the padding, the gray background color. And I get our console.log right here. All right, so now we're gonna enable um, sections on a different page. So if you go in your customized theme and say we want to do the um, 404 page, you would go to it and you're like, oh, I can't add sections, that's weird. So I'm gonna show you how to set that up now. And the way they did it, I'm not a fan of. I think it's really kind of weird, but I'm sure they have their reasons. But uh, let's go to uh, this 404.liquid template. And first we're just gonna move this into a section. So let's create a new section right here. I'll just call mine not found liquid. Now I'm just gonna copy our featured product one. And uh, I'm gonna delete this, delete all the settings, and I'll just call it not found. And not found down here. And then let's copy our HTML from the 404 page. And I'll just wrap it in a div. All right, so now we have a new 404 uh, 
not found uh, section right here. And let's just make sure there's no errors. It looks like it worked. So now to enable sections on the 404 page, you have to change this. So it's no longer a dot liquid. We're gonna make it a dot JSON. And then we have to give it some JSON. So we have to have sections. And then sections is gonna have main. And then here we give it, you have to at least give it one section to render. So we go, the main section is gonna be type. And then you put the name of the uh, section you wanna render. So ours is not found. And then down here, you have to give it order also. And we're only doing one uh, section right now, so we just wanna render main first. It's gotta be double quotes. Let's save that and see if we got errors. And it uh, looks like it's working. So now if we go back here and we refresh, it's rendering that section and we can add additional sections and do whatever we want on this page now. So uh, yeah, you'll do that for every single page and you'll build your entire theme made up of a ton of reusable sections. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much Shopify theme development. I hope this uh, video helped and I'll see you in the next one.